Well, companies around the globe are vying to be the leader in artificial intelligence, and so are countries. Now, that battle, that's widely been described as an arms race between China, is heating up. The two nations are competing for everything from design hardware to raw materials. But that's not the whole story. To tell us more is Yahoo Finance legal reporter Alexis Keenan. Alexis, I know you've been following a lot of this closely for us. Hi, Rochelle. Yeah, so the U.S. followed by China are really today's front runners, let's say, in that really arms race that is the, in the development of generative AI, those large language models, and evidence of that competition for energy, computing power, data, and models is, of course, the U.S.'s ban on exports of those very sophisticated chips to China that are made by companies like NVIDIA. And then China has its own export bans on the U.S. for raw materials that are needed to fabricate those chips. Meanwhile, both nations have subsidies, as do countries around the globe trying to put more money into their own versions of AI development. Now, I had the opportunity uh, uh, recently, about a week ago, to attend Web Summit's tech conference in Doha, and I had the chance to talk with entrepreneurs as well as financial advisors, as well as nonprofits, who are all working to bring AI into the infrastructure of, let's say, cities, municipalities, and also trying to advise their clients as to what will be the most promising type of AI use cases. And the consensus there was that today's geopolitical hierarchy that has the US in the lead there pretty significantly right now over China, that that hierarchy is dynamic, that it is subject to change. And they say that some of the key things that countries can do to really make that shift are things like training of their workforce, uh, bulking up that labor force that knows how to design and uh, not only the hardware, but also the software regulations that countries are or are not passing. We know right now in the US and the UK uh, is kind of regulation light. We don't have any formal laws on the book outside of our own existing laws, one of AI specific laws, uh, that those things all play a role, they say. And if you take a look at a really interesting kind of complex set of information that went into Tortoise Media, it's a media organization out of the UK. They do this ranking on nations and how well they're faring in AI development. And what they look at are things like AI implementation, innovation, investment, also talent pools. And you can see there the US in the lead. Then you have China in that number two position. Newcomer to the number three position, Singapore making major advancements. The UK, Canada, South Korea, uh, there are a host of others as well. Um, but one sore spot for the U.S., they say, putting U.S. all the way down at the 28th uh, ranking is their environment on regulation and also goes into that figure is the public opinion on AI. Uh, so the key area that these AI executives, they say that they that nations can really use to gain an edge is training the workforce. That's a big one. There was a report from the information last week that I, I love that described the uh, workforce that's able to even develop these systems, that there were so few experts that are skilled in making these large language models that they could barely fit into the bleachers of a high school gym. So I love that analogy. Yet another report from Reuters today uh, talking about Europe being in fierce competition for labor, having to pay workers who can do uh, this kind of software uh, training, uh, having to pay them millions of dollars, having to, to throw stock options at them, also worth millions of dollars. And then, of course, you had the DOJ in the U.S. last week filing criminal charges against a Chinese national and former software engineer for Google, saying that he was stealing code and then sending it back for his own enterprises and other Chinese uh, enterprises. Uh, but bottom line here is uh, these experts say it's really too soon to know which countries will really leverage this technology to the greatest economic and societal advantage. Um, so, so much more to come, but got a little glimpse uh, over overseas last week. And this was the consensus that uh, these executives have been talking about.